So welcome everyone. Good afternoon, everyone. I will just wait for uh, another minute or two to allow everyone to join this breakout session. So this is the breakout session on urban transition, urban space. Um, just a, a minute, then we will kick off. Okay, so welcome everyone. Um, my name is Martin Keim and I'm here and I have the honor and the, the great pleasure as well to moderate this breakout session today uh, with a very distinguished panel. So I'm, I'm happy to, to have you all on board. Um, maybe just a few words since we are relatively short on time, we only have half an hour. So we have four uh, people today are very interesting initiatives in the field of um, urban space and, and the transition of, of, of towns and, and, and regions, um, who I'd like to introduce and, and give the chance today to present you a little bit um, on the field of, of social ecological uh, transformation and what the European Green Deal can actually mean once it's applied to the, the ground on a local level. So uh, just just a few words and then I'll start with, uh, with uh, everyone with a kind of intro. Um, so today I'm joined by uh, Elisabetta Brova, who uh, is heading the Women Community Network uh, Architecture. Uh, uh, I'm, I'm sure I'm messing up the pronunciation here, which is uh, <laughs> which is a shame. But uh, <laughs> forgive me on that one. So Architecture, um, you will you will uh, learn more about that in a second. Um, then I'm joined by, by Cléo Meulier, um, who is here from the Transformation House and Field uh, in Germany, comes from Germany's first transformation center in Berlin. Um, maybe I should mention Alisbeta Rova is uh, joining us from Prague today. Then we have Helen Wright, who is joining us from England and is here for the Transition Bollington um, movement. And then last but not least, I'm joined as well. We are joined, we have the pleasure to be joined by Patrick Bielas, who comes from Poland and who is representing Womiasto Association from Katowice in Poland today. So uh, what is this going to be is, as I just said, uh, a kind of introduction to the very interesting initiatives, the four people that I just mentioned, um, are working on and in, in their works and uh, sorry in their, in their in their daily lives, and to give us an overview of what is possible in in different EU member states. So I'd like to start with Alish Beta um, to give us a, an input about the the Women uh, Architectural Network uh, Architecture. Uh, I hope <laughs> you you'd have to correct me. I think That's at some better. point, <laughs> um, and then. Uh, we, we uh, can take it from there. So Alisbeta, the, the floor is yours. <laughs> hello, hello. Thank you for inviting me. And uh, it's a great pleasure that I have the opportunity to, uh, to introduce our community. Uh, so maybe let me ask with, um, with a question. That's uh, actually our starting point. So if you imagine and look back um, in your days of studying, um, I suppose most of you here are maybe like college graduates or university graduates. So just think about how many um, like uh, male and female fellow students were there in your class or in your university. So a couple of seconds. And then another question. Uh, think about in your professional field, how many um, people on decision-making positions are women and how many are men? Maybe there are some 
differences, maybe not, depends on the field. Uh, I am from the field of architecture. And uh, when we did some statistics, it, uh, we found out that uh, like currently in uh, Czech faculties of architecture, there are about 60% of female students, which is like unbelievable. There is uh, never been so many. Yet uh, in the decision-making positions, such as like professor positions or uh, studio leaders or firm company owners, or maybe municipal architects or heads of chambers, there are only 20% of women. And by now it, it's, uh, it's raising questions. So that's uh, when, where we started like two years ago, my friend and dear colleague of mine, and we uh, founded Community Architektki, which is a female professional community of women in architecture and related fields. So far, we have uh, over 1,000 members in the Czech online community. And uh, our mission is simply to bring greater diversity in uh, the built environment, including design. And uh, we do it by creating supportive network, safe space. We uh, are providing some career basics for our younger members. We are passing our know-how. And also we are to opening topics uh, which hadn't been until now uh, like discussed uh, in a great width, such as like how is uh, motherhood combinable with career, topics of care, and maybe some structural handicaps based, uh, based on gender, etc. So maybe that's uh, for starter. Uh, I would uh, may maybe mention uh, our like um, important um, uh, outputs. Uh, we are doing like uh, we have done a list of database uh, of over 120 professionals, experts who are willing to take part in discussion conferences, uh, who are willing to apply for open jobs. And uh, we see this uh, as a huge step towards like, um, yeah, uh, better options for <laughs> male and females in in our field. So that's for starters. Thank you for your time that <laughs> we will discuss later. Yeah, th thank you very much, uh, Elizabeth. Uh, I'm, 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 I'm posting now uh, the, the website of, the, of your initiative that you just mentioned. So very interesting for what I, what I found particularly interesting when I, when I um, had, a, had a brief uh, encounter with you um, before this discussion is that uh, I, I really, appreciate the idea of actually looking at the the very beginning of the social ecological transition, which is not actually looking at the outcome and the status quo as it is, but actually architecture means shaping the future in very concrete terms. So looking at the, at the planning end of it. And so I really uh, found it a very innov innovative um, way of, of, of trying to tackle things. Um, if you, if you look at the, the sort of front end of, of things. Mm -hmm. And uh, so I, I was very, um, very surprised because I, I would have um, never, never actually thought about that way to to tackle this uh, initiative. So thanks a lot for sharing that. Um, I think I'll, I'll swiftly hand over to to uh, Cleo now. Uh, we'll come back to you later, Elisabetta. Um, so you. if you uh, have the time, you could check out the website um, right now. That I've posted in in the chat. And again, you're based in, in Prague, but I think you also, uh, your, your network is also um, in Slovakia, if I'm not uh, mistaken. And um, so uh, we'll, we'll get back later to, to some of the more uh, nitty gritty of the, the, the details of, of what kind of um, projects you implement. But uh, first, uh, let's, get, let's give the floor to, to Cleo now. Cleo is, as I understood, joining us from Berlin today. Yes, uh, hello. Um, I'm from Transformation Haus und Feld, THF, like the former letters from the airport we claim. As a regional movement and a civil society movement, we build a big alliance and we claim this place. It's one of the biggest buildings in Europe. It has a um, shamey history, it was built by a Nazi. It's uh, 1.2 kilometers long and it has a really huge space. And we, um, 
want to build there a center for meeting and education for all practical skills we need for transition. So uh, there are a lot of hangars. We want to dedicate one hangar to the um, producing decentral renewable energy and to pass the skills from professionals to the citizens and that also for transport and uh, there is a big field the airport field and we would love to um, to place their very uh, a lot of permaculture um, um, education spots that the people can learn how to um, uh, produce their own food and um, to push a regional, really um, solid, regional circular economy movement. As we know that if we go on uh, like we do with this uh, kind of economy, we're gonna yeah, uh, kick us out of this uh, planet. So um, we need really to shift and very practically. And even if we tomorrow politically decide to do the shift, we don't have the practical skills in the working world too many too too less people have these skills to how to do um, ecological uh, agriculture how to build uh, a building uh, with with uh, regional materials and in a very um, uh, sufficient way or in a, a resilient way so um, yeah we need this uh, uh, center and what we also want to put in that center is cooperative economy we want to stop with the the profit for one and work for many uh, and we want to really settle the cooperative economy in the regional uh, in the region berlin brandenburg and uh, because yeah we think uh, we need also another uh, relation between state and, and stakeholders from the state and the uh, uh, civil society as the civil society has very, a lot of knowledge and it is situated in niches and we want to put that in the center as to become it mainstream so a common public partnership is our goal and uh, the regional currency to establish things like that is our goal uh, but as far now we are campaign and we don't have this center but this year in berlin we have elections and in germany we have elections so i think it's a very good time to put these things on the table thank you very much Cleo. that that was a, a quite uh, comprehensive overview already of uh, what i think is is a host of activities you you're doing at the transformation housing field um, again, I will, I will now post the, the link to that uh, initiative in, in the chat. Um, I'm not, as since the question is has been raised in the chat, I'm not sure if the, uh, the, if the Architecture yeah. website is available in, in uh, English as well. Maybe uh, we can come back to that later. Um, but um, just to, to highlight that, uh, Cleo, because I found it quite impressive the, in, in terms of your, as we just came from the planning section now to the to the very structural um, approach um, in, the, in the initiative uh, with the architectural women's network to your end is which act, is actually quite at the opposite end of the uh, uh, of the uh, spectrum um, of the spectrum um, meaning that you focus a lot of uh, a lot on capacity building a lot of uh, things that you uh, do are related to to empowering people to uh, to actually get the concrete skills to, for instance, as you mentioned, renewable energies, uh, to uh, properly recycle uh, things. Uh, and, and we'll come back to that a bit later, but uh, I wrote Germany's first transformation center and I assume by that, um, by your initiative, you have uh, empowered and, and inspired other people to um, then develop other transformation centers. Is that correct? Or is that something that's still in the, in the making? It's in the making. We have uh, some, we call that sister project. We have uh, places uh, who are on the same way. They had the same idea. You know, people have uh, with the same problem, same ideas on different places. And for example, in, 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 in Köln, they had a old uh, car house and they claimed uh, the people, the citizens claimed it. And, uh, but it's a temporary space, as you know, and it's not uh, really the common public partnership we want to build. It's, uh, but it, it, these are steps. And in UK, you have the climate emergency centers, which also uh, is a very strong group around that theme that every region needs some centers 
where to put the skills and the cool initiatives and the universities that they talk to the citizens and exchange the skills and the knowledge. Great. Thanks, thanks for, for um, giving me an answer on that one. And um, you, you couldn't, couldn't have made my job more, <laughs> more easy mentioning the UK because that allows me to swiftly hand over to, to Helen now. Uh, who uh, is joining us from the UK, if uh, if she's actually there at the moment. <laughs> it's always a bit hard to tell with this uh, current situation. Um, Helen, please uh, give us some, some insights on, on Transition Bollington. Yeah, hi. Thanks, Martin. So, um, as the name suggests, we are part of the Transition Network, which took root in the uh, original Transition Town, of Totnes over a decade ago. So our name, Transition Wellington, um, re reflects those roots. Uh, we're one of around 300 transition groups in the UK and many more worldwide. And not all use the same naming convention, but our aspirations are on the same lines uh, of coming together as a community to transition from fossil fuel and other unsustainable dependencies to lifestyles that build resilience uh, and social cohesion for our town um, and better respect and nurture our planet and the life on it, including ourselves. Um, we're an autonomous collective. We have a constitution and governance roles, but our actions are formed from consensus within the community. Uh, and, and the basic tenet that we're about driving benefits for positive futures. Um, so, you know, this isn't our day job. We're all volunteers. We're residents um, driving effective change. Uh, Transition Bollington formed about three years ago, initially looking at the single use plastics issue. Um, Bollington is the home of the world's first plastic bottle recycling unit. Um, but we quickly realized that all things are connected and that we were in fact all about doing transition. So now we have folk doing air quality monitoring, installing bike racks and terracycle units and planting edibles um, on council loaned land. Uh, but we're across the whole um, climate action piece for the town. So we have many projects uh, whilst also engaged with our council in helping them to deliver on their declaration of a climate emergency. Thank you. Thank you very much, Helen. Um, so also I've, I've now posted the, the link to Transition Bollington in, in the chat, if you wanna check out uh, their website. Uh, very interesting that you mentioned um, plastic uh, and, and recycling, uh, as obviously this is also one of the, one of the bigger topics in, in our foundation. Um, and we have, in fact, um, launched a plastic atlas. Uh, I think uh, some of you might be familiar with the with the atlas formats, which is basically uh, a copy of uh, different topics on ecologic matters, for instance, uh, energy or mobility, um, but also, as in this case, uh, plastic. And um, I will also later submit the link to, to the chat if you want to have a look at the publication. You will find a lot of the um, different interlinkages between how we sh how policies shape um, recycling, but what kind of what the role in plastic uh, historically is, and um, and what uh, we can do to improve the way uh, we we uh, we consume plastic and we recycle it. Uh, what 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 sort of the the way forward would be in, in some of the things? Um, as as you mentioned, Helen, um, you you've started with with plastics recycling, but you've also moved on to various different topics. As uh, I think I've noted, uh, air quality monitoring as well. Um, I would be also interested um, for for obvious reasons. Um, I don't know if you can say a, a quick word on that, um, of on 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 how the the Brexit, of course, and and how the the current uh, local elections in, in in the UK 
uh, actually um, affect your uh, movements? Are, are, do they have direct repercussions on on your on your um, initiatives, or you would would you say it's really not that um, the the link is really not that uh, direct, and it's going to be some long term effects eventually, but not not really uh, things that would you would you would take into consideration right now. Uh, yes, yeah, certainly at, um, at a local level, it, it is all about our engagement with our local council. But of course, uh, from there, um, you, you know, the, 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 it's like throwing a pebble into a lake, there's ripples that go outwards. And so, yes, you know, from, from the, the top down, and from the outside in, there are things that affect us. Um, Certainly, as as residents that are that are driving this project, um, our first recourse is, is with our local council. Um, I mean, you know, saying that as human beings, we evolve to have voices to communicate, uh, to be heard, and to to help us understand each other. So, you know, I, I can't speak for for policymakers, but but maybe the message is that that we can all find ways to to communicate and and listen and, and collaborate for our mutual benefit. Um, and and our council is is realizing that you know it doesn't matter who we are, whether we're councillors at, at um, uh, local level, county level, national level, or policymakers at international level. We are all residents of somewhere. We all live somewhere and we all have the power and the ability to effect change where we are. Um, and, and it's when, you know, when we're able to make those connections that those changes happen. So, yeah, perhaps a very long answer to, <laughs> to your question, but yes, it's, it's all connected, I believe. No, thank you. Thank you very much, uh, Helen. I think it, it's uh, it's much needed to also see the as you as you just put it the 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 bigger picture and 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 the way you framed it is is precisely that um since we don't have a lot of time left let me hand over quickly to patrick bialas um who as i said is joining us today from poland a few words on your initiative patrick please okay thank you very much for the invitation uh, i'm very happy to uh, present to you uh, uh actions on climate in the heart of coal region uh, in Europe. In, uh, this is uh, the Silesia region. What we uh, did uh, last three years, plenty of uh, climate actions, uh, because uh, three years ago, a year before uh, COP24 in Katowice, I realized that there is a plenty of uh, uh, climate uh, organizations, climate uh, institutions acting uh, uh, in my coal region, but the problem was uh, that they act in, as individuals. Uh, there was no network between um, institutions, between uh, activists. So um, three years ago, uh, with uh, strong support from the Climate Reality Project, we created Climate Speakers Network uh, in Katowice. There was a group of 32 people uh, trained in Berlin and uh, started acting uh, just before COP24. During uh, COP24 in Katowice, uh, we uh, uh, organized a so-called uh, Green Idea Lab uh, uh, Social Climate uh, Summit. Uh, because my idea was not to miss the context of global uh, discussion about climate and uh, make it uh, very uh, more uh, local. And that's why we uh, invited uh, a group of 80 people for today's uh, workshop uh, uh, split uh, into three uh, working groups and we define all together a uh, green future for uh, Silesia coal region. And uh, it was a great pleasure for me to present this uh, um, uh, green uh, future for Silesia uh, manifesto into the uh, Minister of Environment, uh, 
uh, in Poland during COP24. So it was very, uh, very funny story. But just after COP, uh, using the huge social energy in my region, we decided to create so-called uh, Silesia Climate Movement. Um, uh, we start in January 2019, and up to today we have a group of about 170 people meeting quite regular. I will uh, go on the meeting just after our breakout uh, session uh, to, to the online meeting. But it is um, uh, using the methodology called community organizing. Uh, we organize a group of people around problem, climate neutrality, uh, decarbonization uh, in, in our uh, region. And <clears throat> uh, but as the association I'm uh, the leader of, uh, we started acting on just transition. It is not only about the big amount of money uh, which uh, will be transferred i hope uh, to my region but uh, now because professional i uh, work on energy transition and I, and i know plenty of technical details uh, of uh, aspects of uh, energy transition uh, i realized a few years ago that the social aspect of this transition is missing and to avoid this, to uh, make no one left behind in the process of uh, just transition, we started acting on uh, uh, just transition and uh, uh, we started to uh, the local debate on just transition uh, just before the lockdown, the first lockdown, we have uh, scheduled uh, a series of local debates in small towns in my region uh, to start talking about just transition. Uh, suddenly uh, lockdown came, we turned into uh, internet and we started uh, almost, uh, how to say, 16 months online program called Semester with Bo Miasto. Uh, at the end of the day, we have over 200 audience, uh, people audience uh, at the moment, uh, over 50 webinars organized in the last 16 months, um, over 100 experts, even from abroad, from Canada too, uh, invited to the, uh, to the meeting. Um, 20 online debates we organized and uh, uh, at the end of last year, we defined uh, so-called nine demands on just transition from the uh, social perspective. And uh, two weeks ago, we created so-called informal uh, coalition of 12 local NGOs acting on just transition. So that's all from my side. Thank you very much. Great, Patrick. Um, thank you very much for that. And, and thanks for highlighting this, um, this uh, very important aspect for, I think, a lot of local uh, initiatives. Um, and also the other way around from top-down initiatives from a policy level, which is basically the aspect of networking. Uh, the role of networking um, is often underlooked uh, when it comes to linking the different levels, um, linking local initiatives, uh, people on the ground working, in your case, Patrick, uh, for instance, on just transition and, and phasing out coal and what, has, what, has, what that means for local uh, communities. Uh, with the political levels, in that case, the, the COP. So thanks for, for highlighting that. Um, now, I, would, I just want to, again, I, I put the, the link to, to Patrick Biela's initiative in the chat, so you can check that one out. And since we are slowly running out of time, I want to give everybody uh, a last uh, minute, um, or uh, if possible, even shorter, to kind of uh, present one main takeaway from your... Uh, from your initiative, from your work that you would like to share or one, or one challenge that you think uh, it, would be, it would be worth uh, highlighting to actually give the chance to, from other people to learn from that experience. So I think we'll start again with uh, Alice Beta. Yeah, uh, from myself, um, I think a great deal of uh, like where, where we still need to work on is the, um, the principle of care on every level, I say. Uh, from myself, I see it from, from a designing perspective, but also from a human perspective. And I think it's also 
some way how to approach the new Green Deal, because it's not just about numbers, it's how we approach the space or the, the world we inhabit. So care is number one for me. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you very much. Um, Cleo, what, what is your main takeaway or main learning you would like to share? Um, yeah, I was inspired by Mr. Bonyasto. <laughs> I forgot his name. Um, and I think a redistribution from, from wealth is as uh, it goes hand in hand with transition and we won't have the one without the other. So we have to, to talk about redistribution and uh, yeah, and re relocalization of production, uh, I think, yeah. And that won't work without care revolution. So <laughs> one and two are together. Great, thanks, thanks for that, Cleo. Now over to Helen, your main learning. Yeah, I, I just, you know, each community is, is unique and finds its own way, really, with transition. I mean, I could talk about tenacity and, and driving projects and fundraising and never giving up, but really it's all about love. You know, we're coming back to that care thing again. Um, it's For us, it's the connectedness to and within our community for our planet and the life on it. Um, and, and it's just a bunch of folk finding strength together who each have a passion to do some pretty amazing things at a grassroots level. And that scales up, as I said before, in a time of change. We need to be open minded and embrace the possibility that solutions can come from residents, from people, from all people across all walks of life, and that we can all work together to, to achieve our uh, amazing things. Thank you. Thank you very well. I couldn't have summarized it better. Uh, thanks, Alan. Patrick, do you have anything to add to that a last word on what your main learning would be from the years in, in activism? Yeah, for, uh, for change, you need to network people, build a critical mass and don't be afraid of dreaming because if you have a dream, you can change the world. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you very much to everyone. Thanks for presenting. Um, again, you will find the, the links um, to every initiative in the chat and I hope to see you in the main conference again uh, in, in a minute. Thanks everyone and have a very nice afternoon and evening. Goodbye. Goodbye.